uh, Acts the chapter 20. I tell you, this guy here is very interesting. Uh, honey, you know, I'm cut a little different, so certain words deal with me and hit me and my soul a little different than it may hit you. Because I can relate to, you know, this guy right here. Mm-hmm. So Acts chapter 20, starting at verse 16, reading from the New Living Translation. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God says, Paul had decided to sail on. <laughs> Somebody say sell on. Sell on. Past Ephesus, for he didn't want to spend any more time in the province of Asia. Know when your time is up. Remember I told you, God don't move you by way of flesh. A lot of people say their time is up, they're moving off of flesh. But this guy we talking about didn't move off of flesh. He was moved by the spirit. Are y'all with me so far? He was hurrying to get to Jerusalem, if possible, in time for the festival of Pentecost. But when we landed at Miltus, he sent a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus, asking them to come and meet with him. So everything following chapter, I mean, verse 17 is Paul dealing with the elders, the leaders in the church. Are y'all with me so far? When they arrived, he declared, you know that from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I have not done, I have done, I'm sorry, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back, mm, thank you Holy Ghost, from telling you what you needed to hear either publicly or in your homes I have had one message for Jews and Greeks as Gentiles that's us alike the necessity of repenting from sin one message you don't hear people talking about repent from sin no more that was Paul's message one repent from sin and turn to God and of having faith. So repent from sin, turn to God and have a faith in our Lord. Verse 22 says that now I am bound <laughs> by the spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me except the Holy Spirit. Please in this hour silence all the voices and learn God's voice. It's critical. It's critical. It's critical. He says, and now I'm bound by the Spirit to go to, to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city, listen church, after city, the jail, that's prison, and suffering, Paul says, lie here. But then Paul says, tells the elders, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me. By the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And now I know that none of you to whom I have preached the kingdom will ever see me again. Hallelujah, I wouldn't come in this way again. I declare today that I have been faithful, church, to anyone suffering eternal death is not my fault. For I, have, for I did not shrink from declaring all that God wants me to. Paul saying, nobody's blood on my hand, Brandon. I never shrink back from telling the people about thus says the Lord. Even though the message that Apostle Paul preached was not popular. Because he dealt with that word, who my God called S-I-N. And he wasn't received. He was rejected. He was constantly in danger. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord. I pray that one day that I stand before you, Father God, and nobody's blood be on my hand. 
Not because I didn't teach the gospel, because my attitude ran them off, or my behavior ran them off, or I was a stumbling block outside of the pool pit. In any capacity, Father God, please, Father God, don't allow nobody's blood to be on my hand. Father God, I thank you for the Augustina believers that you have gathered here at 205 South Sheridan. Increase our reverence for you. Even for those that's looking online, Father God, that could not make it to the house of the Lord, Father God, I pray, Father God, that they settle their homes or wherever they at that may be watching and that peace be still all around them so they don't miss this strategic word, Father God, that you're about to speak into the atmosphere, Lord. Empower everyone under the sound of my voice. Save somebody's soul. Reclaim someone that may be away from you, Father God. Let someone write in a call in, Father God, as they give their life back to you, Father God. Or if they be for the first time, Father God, let them let us know. Ah, we thank you for the privilege. As I stated, Lord, it's a privilege. Let us never take for granted, Lord, the privilege to do business for the kingdom. You could have chose anybody, but you chose us. So we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. You may be seated in God's presence. Mm. As I stated, I'm excited. I'm encouraged. Before I move on, I want to say happy birthday to all of the October birthdays. Let's give God a hand. I know we didn't announce that. I think today is Sister Lisa and somebody else's birthday. My God, Sister uh, uh, Carmen, her birthday. If you got a birthday this month, please stand up. Let us love on. Amen. Amen. It's a lot of October birthdays now. Dirty dies. Happy birthday, soldier. Already. Yes, sir. Come on, going over Christ. Let's get October birthdays a hand. Amen. Paul felt church compelled by the Holy Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever felt led of the Lord to do something? Let me see your hands. If you ever felt led, <laughs> amen, that's good, that's good. If you have, then you know exactly like you just attest to what Paul is feeling. In these verses, the great apostle teaches us what a solid believer does when he is bound by the spirit and looking at Paul's activities we see a powerful lesson write these words down a powerful lesson note takers dedication we see determination and we see steadfastness it's going to take all three of those words operating high in your belief system in order for you to finish right. Think about dedication, determination, and steadfastness. There's so much opposition against the man or woman of God today that's truly trying to stand for that which is righteous and that which is holy. My God, you have to be dedicated. You have to already have purpose in your mind like Apostle Paul did in order to finish that what God has called you to do. So I'm going to title this sermon because as I told you, Things in the scripture speak different to me. So it's just a simple title. It's called Bound by the Spirit. Paul said, I was bound by the Spirit. Or, or he said, I had an inner compulsion. That's another word for being bound. An inner compulsion. In spite opposition, in spite everything, I had such a driving force, Paul said, that no matter what I heard, no matter what I'm facing, because I've already purposed in my mind, I already function from the core of determination, dedication, and steadfastness, so that means no matter what type of opposition that I come up against, no matter what they say, I'm bound by my inner spirit. Mm. Ooh, Lord, to finish that's why Jesus decreed over there, my God, in the Gospels, my God, that those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. If your belief system ain't locked and loaded in this hour, I promise you, you won't remain steadfast. Uh, you'll talk yourself out of the spirit of dedication. Mm. Uh, if you have not purpose in your mind that you are in a war, uh, I ain't going to even say a battle. You and I are in a war. 
And if you have not purpose in your mind, welcome to a spirit, watch my verb, it's a spirit of strong compromising. See, a lot of sin following us. Paul was bound in his spirit against the warning. So put point number one on the screen. We're making good time, so I got to linger a little bit in an introduction. Uh, Paul had resolve. Resolve means that he decided, church, write this down. He decided firmly on a course of action. <laughs> he decided firmly. He made up his mind way before the threats of prison and trials came. He had already purposed in his mind, Christian, that I'm bound. I'm bound by my spirit. As Minister Lenny taught us in discipleship one this morning, my God, what I am saying this morning, my God, Mama Donna, that, that Paul's spirit was, his will was submitted to his spirit. Because if his will had not been submitted to his spirit, when the people told him that, my God, God has showed us by the spirit that prison and trials await you if you go on to Jerusalem. Now, if he'd have been functioning up our fulfillings, if his will would have been in control of his spirit, Paul might have would have talked himself out of going. Who, my, my God, wants to continue going somewhere when you have been told by a credible prophet, or a credible man or woman of God, or even a credible spirit of God, uh, that you on your way to prison? Uh, you on your way and prison ain't the prison that we deal with today. I promise you it ain't no zuzus and wham whams. Come on. You ain't making no spreads. Just, you ain't making, you ain't getting no debbies. Oh Lord, I can't get nobody to say nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It ain't that type of prison right there. But Paul, because he had resolved, he had purpose in his mind. He was dedicated. I'm trying to help the church. He was fully persuaded, my God. And he had one arterial motive. That is to please God. How about you today? What's your arterial motive today? He had one, to preach truth and finish the assignment that God gave him. I like them type of people. People, my God, that come hell to high water, they going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. They, they not, they're not into trying to please the people, they're into trying to please God. I can work with somebody like that because, see, they, they tend to function out of purpose and not out of feelings. Uh, uh, they not easily move when, when circumstances and situations shift, my God. They don't walk by the feelings. They don't walk by what they see. They walk by faith. Come on. Paul was in a faith walk, my God. No matter what the enemy tried to throw at him, no matter what, even what God said, he had already purposed in his mind that I'm going on. And he knew he was going. And if any of you understand the scriptures, my God, the man that I'm talking about spent over two thirds, spent over half of his life in prison. He wrote... Over half of the New Testament from a dungeon, not a prison. I'm going deeper than that dirty down. I'm going, he wrote it in a dungeon underground with a hole in the middle of the, the cell. He didn't have no one in water. He didn't have no, 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 according to the study of the, uh, the prison. He, because he was in prison underground. So, my God, he had no window. It was completely dark. The only little light he got, my God, is a little hole in the wall, what they saying. And that's what he, and I can imagine him scooting everything right there, just enough light to see so he could write. Because he was determined. He didn't let prison distract him. He didn't let nothing like And it was cold, it was wet. They say the dungeons, my God, always reek with filth. Rats crawling. I can imagine many nights he probably slept standing up. Because to lay down, rats would have ran over your body. And when he laid down, my God, I can imagine he had to lay down in feces because he had a hole in the middle of the cell, they say. And it wasn't that big. Ours is a six by nine, but that wasn't a six by nine. And in the dungeon, he was sh shackled. The only thing was free was this, but his leg was in stocks. Jeremiah was put in stocks and in the harness. And Jeremiah was in prison like this. Leg shackled, harness around his head, and stretched for days and weeks and months. To pay the price to walk with Christ. That's why people in fifth and third world countries, their commitment to Christ is much different than America. We too small in America. Uh, they have to believe God for water. 
They walk days just to get my God some water and they walk days back, my God. And then they got to turn around and do it two more days, walk another two more days. See, we too, they, are, they have to believe God. They can't go down there to pay their advances and they can't say, hey, Pastor Champ, can you loan me 500 and stuff like that? See, they don't get that privilege over in different countries. So their faith and their dependency and their loyalty is completely different from American Christians. That's why we ain't seeing the level of miracles, signs, and wonders from the pool pits like you see over in other countries. The greatest movement, my God, is happening, they say, over there in China and wherever else they're going. My God, it's a different level of faith. But Paul had resolve because he was bound by his spirit. Paul was determined, church, to go to Jerusalem. For many, this was not a popular belief. As I stated in the reading in Acts 21.4, it says this, we went ashore found the local believers and stayed with them one week. These believers prophesied through the Holy Spirit. Be careful, church, please. Know the Spirit. Get acquainted with the Holy Spirit. Do uh, invest in Dr. Miles. I trust the late doctor. Invest in one of his books talking about the Holy Spirit. I trust what he said. Uh, that's a lot of stuff out there. My God, to got the Holy Spirit attached to it. That ain't the Holy Spirit. We got to know the voice of God. We got to know by on a shout over doubt because there's many voices that can sound. As I've been hearing me decree on, declare on Wednesdays, my God, uh, everything that appears, appears sight as good is not God. We always as a people in America associate good things. Oh, that must be good. That must be good. So if I walk down here, I'm going to make it some plain and simple. So I go kiss my wife. Y'all say, oh, that's good. Look at that. He's in love with his baby. To the natural eye, that looks good. But guess what God says? What was your motive for doing that? Did you need applause from them? Or did you do that because you really love her? That's why we got to know what's God and what ain't God. And one thing about people, we are attracted and mesmerized to excitement. Excitement stimulates the five senses. And where we see excitement, that's got to be God. The devil is a lie. Where we see a lot of movement, a lot of hype, a lot of stuff that got Jesus attached to it, we swear by it that it's God. Be careful. The Bible said the Spirit of God led Paul into Jerusalem. Because he was bound by the Spirit. Are y'all with me so far? Let's give God a hand for that substance right there. Mm. The believers prophesied through the Holy Spirit that Paul should not go. That'll preach right there, champ. That's the title of a sermon. Should not go. Should not go where? On to Jerusalem. And then you jump down to verse 10 through 16. Just write them down for your study. And please go study and make sure that I'm telling the truth. Every man is a lie, but God be the truth. Several days later, a man named Agabus, who also had the gift of prophecy, church, arrived from Judea. He came over, church, look at me, took off of his belt and bound his own, Agabus, bound his own feet and hands. That means he tied his feet up. Oh, some of us today is tied up. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Though we walk it, but we tied up spiritually. And I call it this, what I heard God gave this to me many years ago, Pastor. You remember this? I call it the penguin walk. That's how they walk you when you're handcuffed in prison and you're shackled. You do the penguin walk. Christians is doing the penguin walk all around the nation. We bound up. Even though we got some movement, but look how restricted I am. Because my hands is changed and my feet is changed and my, they can only go so I can only make so much progress. See what I'm trying to say? Because I'm bound. So Agabus prophesied, took off his belt, and came over, my God, mm, and bound his own feet and hands with it. Then he said this, listen, church, the Holy Spirit declares, so shall the owner of this belt be bound by Jewish leaders in Jerusalem and turned over to Gentiles, took Paul's belt, bound himself with it and said the owner of this belt will be bound again confirmation that they told him in the book of Acts the 20th chapter that if you go to Jerusalem this is what you got coming 
Okay? I'm trying to help you. Verse 12 says, when he heard this, talking about Paul, and we, and we the local believers, all be, they all begged Paul, I'm sorry, not to go. Don't go, Pastor. Don't go, Pastor. Don't go, Pastor. Don't go, First Lady. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. On to Jerusalem. But Paul said, while all this weeping, you are breaking my heart. I am ready not only to be jailed. Look at the mindset. I am not only ready to be jailed, that's mean in prison at Jerusalem, but even to die for the sake of the Lord Jesus. When it was clear that they couldn't persuade him, they gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. So he got a word from the Holy Spirit in chapter 20. Bring it up to 21. Uh, Agabus, another well-respected man, came into Paul's presence, took Paul's belt, bound his hands, bound his feet, and said, the man who built his ears is going to be bound. That did not deter Paul because he was bound in his spirit. He had already purposed in his mind that I must go on. Why? Because you know what was driving him? First of all, his spirit, his will was submitted to his spirit. And he wanted to please God more than he wanted to please people himself. See, if, if, if you do what you do for you, you'll quit. You'll find an excuse to talk yourself out of why you can't do what you did if it's all about you. But when you make your life about other people, and you realize that other people is dependent on your eternal yes, so when you want to quit, you'll find resolve to get up and keep going. Come on, somebody. When you don't want to flip the pages, you'll keep weak because somebody depending on your wisdom. Oh, my God, you'll find yourself making it a prayer, my God, because you know somebody's going to need some wisdom from you. Yeah. Yeah. See, Paul wasn't living just for Paul. Paul was living first for God. And Paul had a mandate, my God, because he was a church planner. And so he had people that was dependent on him. That's why he said, my time is up and I'm not coming back this way. I got to go on with, my, with the business that God called me to go on with. Uh, you're wasting time hanging on. You're wasting time, my God, trying to stay too long. When the grace is lifted, it's time to shift. But in spite warnings, remember I taught y'all, as the word of God said, that God give warning before destruction. Oh, my God. God was giving Paul warnings through the Holy Spirit, but God already knew that that wasn't going to hinder Paul. That wasn't going to deter Paul from filling the assignment. Just like he knew that what Job went through wasn't going to cause Job to curse God and die. God know what you can handle. Y'all wake up in here. Church. Somebody give God a hand. Come on, somebody give God a hand. God, in spite of the warning, still Paul already knew that Paul was going to go on and do what God told him to do. God knew that Job could handle. God also knew what the young prophet Jeremiah could handle. God also knew that the young prophet Daniel could handle the trial. God knows what you can handle, what you can't handle. That's why you got to get your will submitted to your spirit. See, a lot of our will, our soul is on top of our spirit. When you should reverse it and your spirit should be on top of your soul. Now you in submission to your spirit instead of trying to make your will, your will submit to your spirit. We got to learn how to submit. See, Paul was submitted to his spirit and he wasn't submitting to his will. Anytime you go, the will is Mr. Lenny taught us, my God, is, is what I want. Period. And so the will, my God, is where we get all the rebellion, the stubbornness, the pride, the rejection, all that stuff, my God, because we're going to reject. Paul could have rejected the assignment of God. He could have rejected, my God, the things that God was trying to do. Just like we are today, we are rejecting the things of God. The Bible says, harden not your heart when you hear the things of God. We are rejecting truth and turning away from truth and leaving a lie. Because as we learned in class again, because, my God, we want pleasure more than pain. See, many of us, if we'd have been warned this, we would have left. Oh, no, I'm not going. I got to go to prison? Oh, no, I ain't going. No, no, that, that couldn't have been God. God, it, with the enemy meant for bad, God. Went in. And so we just start trying to talk ourselves out of that. Oh, my God, because we learned in my God in class, my God, the plain pressure principle. Many people are pushed to the point of pain, and then they self-sabotage. Oh, they show up, my God, until, until, until that next step going to require, my God, some, some, some shifting, some dying, some letting go, some releasing, my God. We'll run hard, my God, until it's time to deal with the pain. Yeah. We'll show up, my God, until you tell me to change. Yeah. Oh, my God, we'll read our Bible, my God, until we start reading the world where it tells you that you got to release that and let that go. Yeah. You got to stop being there. Yeah. You got to keep your legs cold. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Me, me and you got to start off that internet on that porn. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm going to keep it on the... Oh, y'all don't like me this morning, but I don't care. I'm a real one, baby. Straight up. My God. I don't care. My God. That's what it is. We, we'll push until we are inconvenienced. Many Christians nowadays don't want to be inconvenienced. Let us have to walk two days to get some water and see what we do. We'd rather die of thirst before we walk two days. Watch when the weather, it get cold outside. It may be, it may be 30 below, but it's the weather, the streets are still good. We're going to see how many of y'all determined to get to church then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This ain't no game because God, as I just taught y'all, looking at your motor. Oh, you're going to stay home on Sunday, but you're going to get up. It's going to be that same 30 below, and the sun still going to be shining on Monday. And so you're going to get up and you're going to clock in on Monday at that job, but you're going to clock in on Sunday. God said, okay, on Tuesday, you're going to go, and they're going to tell you you got to dismiss paper. We shut the company down. We don't need you no more because you made your job God over. That's how, yeah. See, our determination is, and our loyalty is in the wrong thing. Paul's life is that of a man who was determined to serve the Lord. That's just like me. <laughs> this is a snapshot of Paul's life. Paul shows us, my God, that he was absolutely determined to serve the Lord. Absolutely determined. That's what it's going to take, soldier. Absolute determination. My God, to serve the Lord. You can't have your mind. Who you got to have your mind made up? I get listen to me. If you're gonna outlast the storm, Lawanya, you got to have your mind made up. If you're gonna hear a job well done, Patrice, you gotta have your mind. You can't make it up when you get in the midst of something. It gotta be already mine. Come on, my God. Get already be mine. Get already be made up. Mm. Gotta be already made up. Yes, I'm bound by the spirit to go. You function different when you're bound by your spirit and not controlled by your emotions. Again, you'll talk yourself out of the will of God. If you sense any, any danger, any friction, any trouble, uh, any inconvenience, that didn't sound right, that don't feel good, that can't be God. God loves me too much, my God. How can that be good when the Bible says every good and perfect gift, my, how come trials can't be perfect? How come doors closing can't be perfect? Why, why come stuff happening can't be the will of God? Come on, stuff that you thought was going to happen didn't happen. How come that can't be the will of God? Why do we always have to associate, my God, the will of God with good, perfect things? Oh, my God, Sister Shea got me, got me a book, my God, it's called you got, to, you got to Grow in Dark Places. I said, ooh, Lord, I started reading it. I said, my God, you got to grow in dark places. Moses growed on the backside of the mountain for 40 years before God called him out. Quit running from the dark. Because God going to push you to the dark because he does his greatest work in the dark. A seed don't grow in the light, a seed grow on the ground. Come on, somebody. You need those dark times. You need, my God. Oh, my God. Dark times has a way of making you pray. Dark times has a way of making you read. Dark times have a, have, dark times has a way of cleaning your soul up. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Come on, somebody. Quit running from the dark times. You need the dark times. You need somebody melting to lie on you, turn their back on you, and make you go harder. Oh, my God, to make you depend on God. Sometimes God will let people abandon you because he wants you to depend on him instead of depending on people. He's trying to shift your loyalty. So all that you're depending on, I'm going to take it from you so you can depend on me I'm trying to shift you to me I'm trying to get you away from people and get you to me you need some dark places baby give me some spirit of God to preach on anything write this down up on the point number one let's look at Paul's conduct in the past write this down verse 18 through 21 says the next day Paul went with us to meet James and all the elders of Jerusalem church were present. After greeting them, Paul gave a detailed account of the things God had accomplished among the Gentiles through his ministry. After hearing this, they praised God, and then they said, you know, dear brothers, how many thousands of Jews also have believed, and they all follow the law of Moses very seriously. Verse 21 says, but the Jewish believers here in Jerusalem have been told that you are teaching all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn their back on the laws of Moses. They heard, they've heard that you teach them not to circumcise their children or follow other Jewish customs. What is going on right now, even though Paul is bound by his spirit, he have already purposed in his mind that he's going to do what God told him to do. Now you see opposition coming up against him. 
You're starting to see the prophecy that things is awaiting you. Now you're preaching something different. But the scripture said Paul, baby, preached one message. When did he shift? See how people are allowing you? See how people are twist? See how people, see the enemy always trying to, trying to get allegiance of demons, allegiance of, see, uh, T.D. Jakes was talking about this morning, you know what I'm saying, you know, we know, we are simple saying, we know hurt people hurt people. You know, the people that live in the dark, they try to draw people to the dark. Be careful what's drawing you. Be careful what's drawing you. I'm serious, church. One thing is I taught y'all Wednesday, my God, everything in the demonic, you never see uh, a division against devils or demons. Unity. Evil is unified. Why come good and God's people can't be unified? How can two walk together except there be a... If the darkness understand the power of agreement, and we don't, as Christians, we in church, jumping and shouting and screaming. I posted this morning, my God, you can't dance past your pain. You got, I mean, your life, I mean, your stuff, you got to confront it. You can't dance past the stuff you need to confront in your life. You got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. But now they didn't lie on Paul. They're trying to say you preaching something different. But Paul told the elders, see, Paul was strategic and the spirit led him. He had already met with the elders in the church and let them know, I preach one message. I ain't deviated from that. So now he's going on about his business and now the very thing that he told the elders is now coming against him. They're trying to say he's preaching something else. You see how quickly things can shift in your life? Whew, my God. Mm. He had given everything he had. God's people should hold nothing back, but they should put it all on the line for God, just like David did facing Goliath and just like the three Hebrew boys. Have you put everything on the line? Think about the shirt. Come here, son. Yes, Lord. I know they see it, but they're going to see it again. Turn around, son. That says, read that, Shane. What that shirt? When people see you wearing this, guess what they're looking at? Say it again. First time guessing, no, not the lion, life. So going off a crash is not raw, 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 it's not strength, it's what you live. See what I'm trying to say? And so, my God, have you put it on the line, not for the church, but for Christ? Thank you. Get that image. Have you put it on the line? What have you truly sacrificed and given up? What have you really given up for God? What is that little thing? I know you don't smoke cigarettes no more, but what, is it, what else God is asking you to give up? What else is God asking you as a body to come down here and because the altar represents sacrifice, the altar represents death. What is God asking you to come and sacrifice? What is God asking you to come and kill? My God, he was getting ready to kill Isaac, my God, and God said, stay thy hand. Abraham was willing to sacrifice the promise, his only son. How, how can you ask me to give up something? You said the promise was coming through Isaac, my God, and now you're telling me to come kill him? And so he did. Oh, my God, out of obedience, he did it. He went up there. He was at the last stage, and he had his hand drawn, and God shifted. Stay the hand. He said, now I know I can trust you. Now I know I can trust you at a level you are willing to sacrifice the thing you love the most. If you can't, oh my God, if you can't give up the thing you love the most, uh, uh, are you willing this morning to sacrifice the thing you love the most? Oh my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Uh, uh, ooh, Jesus. Talking about my babies, my wife. Abraham waited almost till he was a hundred years old. He was a dollar and got a baby. And you trying to tell me, God, the promise woman of God, I'm flowing. I'm trying to make the people understand because there's a different level of understanding in the church. My God, oh my God, Abraham was a dollar. That means a hundred. And I waited all my life for this promise. And now you're telling me to kill it? Oh, God.
God will disrupt your life when you fall in God. <laughs> oh, that's obedience at the highest level. Don't get no higher. Oh, you don't go no harder than what Abraham showed us in the scripture, baby. He was willing to give the thing he waited a hundred years for. He was willing to risk it all to obey God. Who somebody give God a hand in a church house, baby? Hey! Oh my God, God wants it all. He don't want none of it at all. Some of you need to put your jobs on the altar. You need to put your marriages on the altar. You need to put your kids on the altar. Because they really your God. And the good thing about that whole story, what God asked him for, he gave it right back to him. <laughs> so what he asked you for, he go, mm. Stay thy hand. And she was ready to be sacrificed. She didn't cry. She didn't move. She said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I ain't got to deal. And because you was willing to sacrifice your own there. Oh, you was willing to sacrifice the promise. God said because of your obedience, I swear I'm going to bless you. And gave her right back to him. God gave Isaac right back to him. Yeah, yeah, I can take her, baby, because I know who she is. Don't get it twisted. Hey! He'll give it right back to you. He'll give it right back to you. Put your marriage on the altar. Put your kids on the altar. Put your finances on the altar. Put your mind on the altar. Put your ego on the altar. Put your frustration on the altar. And watch God give you everything that didn't be took from you. He'll give it back to you. Yeah. Jesus. Build into us an eternal yes. An eternal yes like Apostle Paul had. Let us be bound by our spirit and not controlled by our flesh, Lord. A fresh start and a new beginning, Lord. A fresh start today. A fresh start today. A fresh start, Lord. An extreme makeover internally. A extreme makeover internally. Oh, my God. Touch our belief system. Touch our belief system. Touch our belief system, God. Stir us up for a blessing. Mm. Stir us up for a breakthrough. Ha. Stir us up. Stir us up. Stir us up, Lord. Ooh, Jesus. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. More sensitive to your spirit. Stronger obedience. Stronger commitment. Unyielding steadfastness. Unyielding determination. No matter what danger awaits us, Lord, we are bound in our spirit to go on and finish our assignment, Father God. We will not let the pain, pleasure, syndrome sabotage us. Oh, my God, a promotion of a promotion. Promotion comes in dark places. Promotion starts in dark places. You promote us in private before you promote us in public, Lord. Ah, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father God, thank you for the people of God. Thank you for the people of God. Thank you for the people of God. Thank you for the people of God, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for next level in every area of our lives. Thank you that you're getting us held healthy so we can go out, Father God, and evangelize, Father God, our neighborhoods, our jobs, and our homes, Father God. Help us to fulfill the great commission. Father God, you sent the apostles out, Father God. Who, my God, to the different regions, to the different towns, Father God. Who, my God, to permeate and spread, Father God. Who, the gospel, Father God, so give us a burning desire. 
who, my God, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, Father God. Let the revival break loose at 205 South Sheridan, Father God. You build from a remnant, Father God. There's a remnant that's still left inside of this congregation, Father God, that's still hungry, that's still thirsty, that's still determined, that still shows up, Father God. So, Father God, empower us and then release us to be obedient to Matthew 28, 19, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the inner healing that's taking place. We thank you that you're teaching us how to apply that which we are hearing and that what we are learning that's according to your spirit, Lord. Finish. Lord, I decree and declare, as the late Dr. Miles Monroe decreed and, decreed and declared over me, Lord, I speak this one scripture, Father God, Philippians 1 and 6. Oh, my God, as it was decreed and declared over my life, I decreed and declared over my sons and daughters' life in this ministry that he who begun, he, Jesus, who begun a good work in each and every one of us will complete it to the day of Jesus Christ's return. So we get out of your way so that you can get in the way. We yield. We sacrifice it all, Father God, because you're going to give it back to us that what we need anyway. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Come on, somebody tell him thank you. Come on, somebody tell him thank you.